Welcome. This is called the Nyx, a place where the gods are born and dreams become a reality. You yourself are only an idea right now, but if you're going to play in the world of Theros, we will need to solidify that idea. Where you are from and what god has imbued you with their strength. Come, let us get started. So you're going to play in a campaign set in Theros, but the question is, what character are you going to play? Slight spoiler warning ahead, so run this video by your DM if you're going to play in this game. But this Magic the Gathering inspired setting takes heavy inspiration from the mythos of ancient Greece. Slay the heads of the Hydra and shoot the eye of the Cyclops, all while the gods roam freely in both the heavens and on earth, and where fate and destiny itself govern this world. With the heavy focus on gods in the setting, the players will find themselves connected in some way or another to a god, each god having their own domains, demands, and deific gifts to bestow upon you, depending on your follow through. So what gods look over you? Where do you fit into this world of Theros and what will be your driving force in this magical realm? Let's find the answer now. We start with the Nyx, the cloudy starscape that takes up the sky of Theros. This is where the beliefs of mortals are made into reality and where most of the gods have been born. You may have heard that gods are only as powerful as their worshippers, and that is correct. If mortals collectively believe in an entity strong enough or believe that they will do something, that being or action becomes a reality. It doesn't happen automatically and it does take time, but this is how the gods defeated the titans so long ago. Because the mortals believe strong enough that they could and would, Nyx is the substance that changes reality and makes dreams come real. In the Theros book, you are given an option as a player to start out with a supernatural gift. Acting as a first level feat, it gives you certain abilities. In the case of the Nyx, you can take the gift Nyxborn, who are people who look mortal, but are actually created by the minds of the gods in their own image of perfection. You are a dream or an idea that has taken shape. The gift allows you to turn starry, giving others disadvantage on attack rolls, as well as resistance to both necrotic and radiant damage. We will get to the other supernatural gifts later. If you want to expand the power of the Nyx in your class, the Circle of Stars Druid would be a perfect fit for one who channels the Nyx. I might also suggest the Circle of Dreams Druid or the Wild Magic Sorcerer channeling the magic of people's dreams. And then pick up feats like Meta Magic Adept, Magic Initiate for Cleric, or Divinely Favored. Now we turn to the gods. In most cases, you are either an acolyte who worships them or a champion sponsored by them, usually out of self-interest. But first we start with the top of the food chain with Krufix, the god of horizons, as the first god of Theros. Their other domains being secrets, time, and navigation. Those who follow Krufix, though few, are devoted to guard secrets, seek out knowledge, and travel for hidden things. Clerics of knowledge or trickery domains would fit well under this god's umbrella, but I could also see a scout rogue or horizon walker ranger wandering plains and dungeons for old artifacts, or a chronergy wizard delving into the secrets of time. Even a lore bard compiling secret tomes and sharing relevant information. Some feats to allude to the power of Krufix might be Dungeon Delver, Observant, or Prodigy. At any point during the campaign, if you have favor with a god, you gain or lose piety, depending on what you do. Piety is a point system that informs special perks your god bestows upon you for following their ideals. For example, to earn piety with Krufix, you need to do things like keeping a secret despite personal cost, revealing a critical truth at an important moment, mediating a major dispute, or aiding the weak while impeding the strong. And and then you should avoid revealing a secret that should remain unknown, selfishly refusing uh, to share information, showing favoritism toward any other group or god, or furthering the aims of other defiant gods. If you do gain piety with Krufix, you will gain spells like Detect Magic, Mage Hand, and Detect Thoughts, as well as advantage against being charmed, as well as boosts to your armor class while with your Mage Hand, and boosts to your constitution and intelligence scores. Now, Clothis is equal in power to Krufix, being a goddess of destiny and the natural order order of things. With both destiny and time being the domains of these two gods, they are the only gods that don't need worship to exist. Destiny and time need only to be acknowledged as reality and they are good to go. Those that are influenced by her domain often seek to help destiny maintain its course, accepting their own fate whenever it may be, and thwart those that tangle in the strands of destiny. She has created a host of Nyxborn as agents of destiny to fulfill these purposes. A cleric of both knowledge and order domains would do well in this regard. At the same time, a clockwork soul sorcerer that strives to fix fate on the fly, or a divination wizard always seeking what fate has in store that they might help push that narrative. 
so I would pick up feats like Lucky, Ritual Caster, or Resilient. Gain Piety with Clothis by defeating a creature that has taken fate into their own hands, repairing and correcting wounds in the strands of fate, and teaching people about Clothis. Avoid things like undoing a punishment or curse that fate has decided for a creature, willfully destroying the order of things, or assisting another creature in doing so. As long as you do that, you get spells like Command and Clairvoyance, advantage on being charmed, you can't be surprised, and your strength and wisdom scores gets improved. Moving to the children of Clothis and Crufix, we find Erebos, god of death, the underworld, and wealth. Not unlike Hades in actual Greek lore, and I should add here too that if you don't like the Theros-inspired pantheon, you can always replace the pantheon with the names of the gods of actual Greek mythology. But in this pantheon, Erebos presided over those who suffer misfortune and hoards both souls and treasures the souls carry with them to the afterlife. A jealous and tyrannical god, but at the same time non-confrontational as he expects everything to be given to him in the end. But there is good in the god as those pray to him to help them be more accepting of misfortune and carrying the weight of being poor or without loved ones. Clerics of Death and the Grave would be good options for Erebos. You may also be looking at a Necromancer Wizard, the Undead Warlock, or Phantom Rogue, all channeling the spirits of the dead and leading others to the soul horde of their god, or a way of the Long Death Monk or Shadow Sorcerer that may speed up that process. Pick up feats like Shadow Touched, Eldritch Adept, or Durable to add flavor. Gain piety with Erebos by helping them come to terms with their misfortune, helping with someone's death or funeral, retrieving souls, or thwarting schemes of the god Helia. Try avoiding saving a life without gold compensation, forsaking duties or pleasure, or allowing souls to escape the underworld. As long as you do those things, you gain spells like Bane and Vampiric Touch, as well as heal yourself when others die around you and increasing your constitution and wisdom scores. Speaking of Heliod, they are the god of the sun, justice, and morality. He sees himself as a kind and benevolent ruler that as long as people listen to him, things will turn out all right. And just as light casts out darkness, justice casts out chaos and lawlessness. He also takes interest in familial bonds that tie people together. Clerics of Light and Peace make great champions of Heliod, as well as an Oath of the Crown de or Devotion or Vengeance Paladins. A Sun Soul Monk may also channel the Key of the Sun, or a Samurai Fighter that embodies the idea of justice and morality. And I would also say a Fiend Warlock, not because of the Delvilish origins, but just the firepower and resilience of the Sun. Try taking on feats like Elemental Adept, Charger, or Athlete, which is one more feat given in this book specifically. Gain piety with Heliod by carrying out punishments on fugitives, exacting inventions on those who have done you wrong, defending others from monsters or building temples. Try to avoid things like breaking a promise, oath, or law, or putting others at risk through cowardice. Do that and you get the bless and daylight spells, resistance to being blinded, and fire damage, and you get to increase your strength or wisdom scores. Thassa is the goddess of the sea, knowledge, voyages, and aquatic creatures. You're Poseidon look like. However, she is the herald of slow and purposeful change, much like the rivers and lakes of the earth. Change is essential and permanence is despising. Most of Thassa's worshippers are Tritons, who are given as a main race in the book, fish people, for lack of a better term, but you also find sailors, fishers, and other citizens who look to waters for calm and safety, praying for her guidance. Clerics of Tempest and Twilight would do well with the storms in the depths of the ocean, as well as a fathomless warlock or storm sorcerer that may have fallen victim to it. Channel the sea life with a circle of the moon druid or swarm keeper ranger. If you're into critical role subclasses, the Oath of the Open Sea Paladin would also be a perfect fit for the voyages across rivers and oceans, or just go with the swashbuckler rogue. And then try feats like mobile, tough, or alert, because there are unfortunately not many water-themed feats. Gain piety with Thassa by supporting those who reform or overturn institutions, preventing fast or harsh changes, offering treasure to the sea, and maintaining temples to Thassa. Try to avoid keeping secrets from your god, using magic to calm the sea, upholding a permanent institution, or bowing to the demands of other gods. Do that, and you can get spells like Fog Cloud and Blink, and you have advantage against being charmed and restrained, and you get a boost to your dex or intelligence scores. Another sibling, Nylia, is goddess of the hunt, of forests, rebirth, and seasons. She is carefree and sees that it is her right that the whole world be her hunting grounds. She may also appear as a dryad, tree, or an animal, showing her oneness with nature. Her change inspires many to make transformations themselves or in the world around them. 
especially civilization as it becomes a threat to nature. There is a ton of facets to Nylia. Clerics of her purview could be nature or life domains. The pull of the hunt or her archery prowess could inspire a hunter or monster slayer ranger or arcane archer fighter. The seasons on hunting grounds could be home to many circle of the land druids from any landscape, a circle of the shepherd that aids in the predator and prey dynamic of life, or a totem warrior or beast barbarian that embodies it. You may also find some fey influence with Nylia in a world where that might not be the focus, with an archfey warlock or fey wanderer ranger, and may I add the Eladrin elf as a race that would be popular with this god. So popular feats would also be magic initiate for druid, fey touch, and fey teleportation. Gain piety with Nylia by healing a sick or injured animal, stopping those who hunt only for sport or profit, proving your worth in archery, or slaying an unnatural creature. Try to avoid killing an animal for no reason, dedicating a building or making animal sacrifices, or protecting civilization from natural dangers. Do that and you get the spells Hunter's Mark and speak with animals. And I should mention that if you already have the spells your piety gives you, the feature actually gives you free castings of them, so you get both of these without having to expend spell slots. But also as a feature, you get a natural deterrent for beasts attacking you, and your dex or wisdom soar goes up. The last sibling on this tier is Perforos, god of the forge, creation, earth, and fire. He is held dear by artisans, inventors, and tradesmen alike, and he blesses those with a restless and creative mind. However, the mind of creation often forgets the consequences of the creation, or what else is destroyed in the making of it. From wooden ships to metal blades all fall under the eyes of Perforos. Clerics that worship him are easily the Forge Domain, but could also be the Light Domain. You could also be a College of Creation bard that sings things into existence. Also an obvious place for your artificers of all sorts and possibly a Conjuration or Transmutation wizard who are actively using those magics to create or a wildfire druid that channels the flames of creation. And since Perforos often appears as a phoenix, I could also see a phoenix sorcerer. And I know that this is just unearthed arcana, but I am just calling it where I see it that it could be cool. And if you are good with unofficial or homebrew material, you could also check out my College of Hymns Bard in my most recent issue of my Patreon magazine. One that channels divine magic from any pantheon of gods and even multiple gods, all with a voice that can make the angels blush. You can find it in my most recent issue of the channel magazine where we also go over other character flavor and content surrounding divinity. Free for those who support me on Patreon, but also available in my website, all linked below. Thank you guys so much for the support. But back to Perforos being the god of earth and fire, this would be a cool excuse to be a fire or earth Ganassi. Genies aren't prevalent in this setting, so it might be a good change in species origin. That these Ganassi are actually Nyxborn that were made from the mind of Perforos. After all, Prometheus of Greek mythology made humanity out of fire and clay. For this one, try out feats like Artificer Initiate, Skilled, or Gunner. To get piety from Perforos, fight against those who rule over others, be impulsive, destroy something that has outlived its usefulness, or create something in your god's name. Avoid things like following an unjust law, creating something really bad, or backing down from a fight or contest. Do that and you get the spells Shield of Faith, Mending, and Heat Metal, and you have advantage against being knocked prone, you also avoid being forcibly moved, and your strength or intelligence scores get boosted. These next gods I will do together because they are two sides of the same coin, both gods of war. Iros is the god of victory, honor, and athletics, while Mogus is the god of rage, cruelty, and revenge. While Iros embodies honorable combat and courageous action, Mogus embodies needless violence and bloodlust. Though both see war, pain, loss, and fear as a necessary thing, and neither promotes diplomacy as an option. From battle, only the strongest and bravest emerge, the natural cleansing of humanity, but its order versus savagery being the contested results of bloodshed. Clerics of war, order, and death would be great domains for either god, as well as a war, magic, or evocation wizard that either glories in victory or bloodshed. Barbarians of Berserker and Zealot will rage until the war is over, or a college of valor or battle master and champion fighters that will never tire from a fight. An Oath of Glory Paladin may channel their god, which subclass comes specifically from this book. Or an Oathbreaker that was dishonorable in a fight and went from Iros to now Mogus. 
I could even see a Hexblade Warlock who doesn't want to fight, but must because they're packed with either one. Or a Blade Singing Wizard that is very eager to do so. So lean into feats like Polar Master, Great Weapon Master, Heavy Armor Master, Sharpshooter, or Martial Adept. Gain piety from Iros by achieving a great victory, overcoming bad odds, defeating a foe in single combat, or winning a feat of strength or skill. Try to avoid showing cowardice, besting a foe through deceit, or harming innocents and unarmed creatures. Do that and you get the spells Compelled Duel and Crusader's Mantle, and you have advantage against being frightened. You are also protected by the advantage of others, and you get boons to your strength or in charisma scores. Gain piety from Mogus by defeating champions of Iros, taking vengeance, burning buildings to the ground, or desecrating Iros' temples. Try to avoid failing to carry out vendettas, displaying weakness or compassion, or rejecting a challenge out of fear. Do that, and you get the spells Wrathful Smite and Blinding Smite, advantage on saving throws against being charmed or frightened, and you get a boost to strength or constitution scores. Phoenix, or Fenex, would <laughs> depending on how you pronounce it, is our first ascended mortal, a god of deception, lies, and cheating, and stands in direct opposition to Heliod, god of justice. Phenax rose to godhood after escaping the underworld through illusion and deception. His magical charisma is often admired by actors and gamblers alike. Subtlety and manipulation is his game, even to secretly have do-gooders work for his cause, slowly turning their mortal compass. Clerics of Phenax lean well into trickery or twilight domains. Through deceit and darkness, you may find a Gloomstalker Ranger, a Thief, a Mastermind Rogue, or a Way of Shadow Monk. Through lies and charm, you may find a College of Whispers or Glamour Bard, or an illusionist wizard following this god. Feats that might work well are Mage Slayer, Actor, or Tavern Brawler. Gain piety from Phenax by helping a fugitive escape justice, pulling off a heist or robbery, obstructing other champions, and building temples to Phenax. Try to avoid assisting lawgivers with their duties, keeping an Orthus War to, or bring order in times of chaos. Do this and you get the spell Disguise Self, advantage on deception checks, and you don't reveal your position when attacking a creature from hiding, and you get a boost to dexterity or charisma. Kyranos is the god of storms and wisdom, your Zeus look-alike, and like the storms, he is merciless, impatient, and lashes out unexpectedly, at least in the eyes of mortals. There is no toleration with Kyranos, and worshippers revere that in his wisdom. A wisdom that is unhindered by compassion or kindness, he rewards those who have forethought and punishes the reckless. Those that follow him must welcome the storm because they are prepared for it. Clerics of Keranos would be Tempest or Order Domain, but also similar to Thassa in welcoming storm sorcerers or storm herald barbarians. A way of the open hand monk could channel the eye of the storm, but manifest the destructive nature when necessary. Also an Oath of Conquest paladin to challenge the foolhardy. I could also see an Abjuration wizard always being wise to defend against the test of stormy times. Also picking up feats like Keen Mind, Savage Attacker, and Sentinel. Gain piety from Keranos by solving challenging puzzles, smiting the unwise and foolish, helping others plan for a threat or helping build a Keranos temple. Try to avoid jeopardizing others through thoughtless decisions, willingly impeding a wise course of action, failing to plan or giving in to fury and destruction. Do that and you get lightning imbued into your attacks, you can reroll failed intelligence or wisdom saving throws, you have advantage on initiative, and you get boosts to intelligence and wisdom. Farika is the goddess of disease, medicine, poison, and aging, all the causes and roads to death. Alchemists of Farika seek her guidance to avoid avoid such fates, which she does have answers to, but are well hidden. Rather than give the answer, she treats the world as a lab experiment, seeing how the specimens on her table will ultimately react and then learn from. She embodies that in the same vial of venom, you will find both the tonic and the toxin, and thrives on helping in our own experimentations. Clerics of life, death, knowledge, and nature can fit different aspects of her logos. Both in Alchemist Artificer and Order of the Mutant Bloodhunter may experiment on the toxins of the world if you do use Bloodhunters at your table. A Swarmkeeper Ranger or Circle of the Spores Druid may work with toxins and venom of both the plants and animals of the forest. An Assassin Rogue that uses the poisons on their blades or a Way of Mercy Monk using both toxins and tonics in their punches as they strive for a long life without aging. So look at feats like Poisoner, Piercer, or Healer. Gain piety from Farica by curing a dangerous affliction, defeating a foe with poison, discovering a people or creature, or building temples to Farica. Try to avoid destroying medical research, performing healing without compensation, or slaying a Medusa or Serpentine creature. Do that and you get Ray of Sickness spell, advantage against being poisoned, immunity to disease, being able to cure others of disease, 
debuffing the attacks of enemies and boosts to your dexterity or wisdom scores. Ephora is the goddess of cities, industries, art, and considered the founder of civilization. She helps others reach their highest potential through progress in schooling, industry, and art. She seeks for justice while supporting her followers that champion the building of new industry, never recklessly, but always safely. Clerics of Knowledge, Arcana, and the Forge Domains make great Ephra acolytes, but you can find civilian progress everywhere. Whether it be in the Scribe's Wizard who carefully dictates laws or takes minutes of the College of Eloquence Bard's court session. We have the Oath of the Crown Paladin guarding the royalty or the Divine Soul Sorcerer working at the healing facility. The Artillerist Artificer Army of Guards or a Tradesman Fighter, also available in my monthly magazine of last month, who does well in their trade in protecting the family in their use of tools in their fighting styles. So pick up feats like chef, linguist, or skill expert to name a few. Gain piety from Ephra by defending a city from threats, defeating a foe bent on anarchy, or creating a work of progress. Try to avoid committing actions of corruption or tyranny, destroying civic institutions, or willingly breaking laws for personal gain. Do this and you get the spell Comprehend Languages, Advantage on Persuasion Checks, Rerolling Intelligence Saving Throws and Checks, the spell Private Sanctum, and boosts your intelligence and charisma scores. Karametra is the goddess of harvest, agriculture, family, and fertility. The value here comes in the community and the balance of nature under human hands, both plant and animal. She thrives in domestication and reminds people that they are part of the natural world, same as everything else. Everything eats and everything poops. So she also watches over mothers, orphans, and homes, those that seek belonging and love. Clerics of life, nature, and peace all keep this balance of home and heart. A college of spirits bard may still hold on to the love of ancestral parental figures, the same as an ancestral guardian barbarian, astral self monk, or echo knight fighter. Speaking of bloodlines, the draconic bloodline or bloodline of any sort might drive the familial narrative. And a circle of shepherd druid or beast master ranger could get into the animal husbandry aspect. I try using feats like Mountain Combatant, Resilient, or Inspiring Leader. Gain piety from Karametra by turning a wild field into crops, feeding those who starve, defending a farm, or building temples to Karametra. Try to avoid destroying a settlement's food source, releasing domestic animals, diverting irrigation, or being a pyromaniac. In return, you get a bonus to your armor class, the spell Create Food and Water, advantage against being poisoned, ability to create potions of healing, and boost your constitution and wisdom scores. Athreos is the god of past Passage, borders, and journeys, the one that actually ferries souls to the underworld, knowing exactly the contents of your soul and where that soul belongs. Those who worship Athreos do more out of superstition than praise. In that spirit, they are also the god of the wishing well, as well as obscure phenomena that defies simple classification. Things like echoes, phantom limbs, and deja vu. Those who worship this god are content with just doing their job and not stirring the pot. Just keep your head down and the world will balance out. Clerics of death, grave, and twilight domains may represent the obscurement of whatever is between life and death or dark and light. So that grayness could also give birth to a shadow magic sorcerer or shadow monk. I imagine creatures of this purview are less scary and more just unsettling. So maybe an aberrant mind sorcerer, great old one warlock, soul knife rogue, or another college of whispers bard. Try out feats like skulker, magic initiate for warlock, or telepathic. Gain piety with Athreos by providing coins and overseeing funerals, ensuring the deeds of the diseased are preserved, and keeping people in the afterlife. Try to avoid denying a dying person of their final rights, removing wealth from a corpse or tomb, or aiding souls to escape the underworld. Do that and get gentle repose, speak with dead and false life spells, and an increase to your intelligence or wisdom scores. Some honorable mentions are the dead god Xenagos, god of revelry and hedonim, whose attacks left the other gods disconnected from their followers until the other gods killed him. Who knows, he might not be dead after all. As well as the dead god Cacophony, a previous god of cities birthed from dreams, Perhaps she is not dead, but god of under cities now. Whatever god you believe in, or if they believe in you, you can be awarded other supernatural gifts as a starting feat or something you gain later. Remember how I was saying that you could be forged by the fire of clay with the god Perforos? Well, with the Anvil Rot gift, you can be exactly that as a half construct. You have advantage against poison and resistance to poison damage, don't need to eat, drink, or breathe, immune to disease, and you don't sleep. You also can spend six hours for a long rest in just an inactive state. With Heroic Destiny, you are tied to fate and have advantage on death saving throws and can pop up to one hit points instead of zero. With Iconoclast, you are basically an atheist in a world of gods, so basically you just refute that you need them, and these abilities come abundant as you level up. 
First, you get protection from evil and good spell, but cannot gain or lose piety to any god. At 5th level, you can cast a spell magic. At 11th, you can cast a spell evil and good. And at 17th, you can cast anti-magic field with a bump in power to your dispel magic spell. The Unscrutable Gifts gives you a mind like a sphinx with resistance to psychic damage, and others have trouble reading your thoughts or intents. With the Lifelong Companion Gift, you have a beloved relationship that supports you in your adventures. You gain an aura that gives advantage against being charmed or frightened, and you can take on hit that target those immediately around you. And we already talked about Nyxborn at the beginning of the video. The Oracle gift gives you a divination prowess at the service of a god. You learn the celestial language and you can add a d10 to a d20 roll. You also replace any piety you earn with the new piety options, getting to cast augury, divination, and commune as well as not capable of being surprised and then increasing your intelligence or wisdom scores. With the pious gift, you begin with a head start in piety. You can reroll saving throws, have advantage on religion checks and already start with a piety score of three. Then we have the unscarred gift, where some magical influence has given you resistance to physical harm, giving you a d12 that you can take off damage when you're hit. Now the races that are highlighted in the book are human, centaur, leonin, minotaur, satyr, and triton because of their Greek inspiration. But you can honestly bring any race that you want into the world of Theros if it's alright with your DM, of course. Have each of the players worship a different god entirely, all worshiping the same one or none at all. Just know with the power of belief on your side, Nyx itself will help you make your character a reality. Let me know in the comments below what god you follow, maybe in or out of the game. If you are looking to create characters in Strixhaven, Ravnica, or other campaign settings, check out the rest of my playlist here. But in the meantime, go out there and spread the good word of TTRPGs and make the world a better place, both on and off the table. See you in the next one.